Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. I am your host Tony and today I, 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 want, I, want, I want to bring you all a new video here. Now I hope you all had a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays and I hope you all, you're all enjoying the last few days we have before we, we, we celebrate New Year's Eve and end the year 2020 and go into the year 2021. And it was a really, really interesting year here, both good and bad, like with COVID, the election and all that and all that, that, that stuff. But today, I'm going to be able to bring you all, since we're, since we're at near the end of the year 20, 2020, I'm bringing you all my thoughts on gaming to, on gaming of the year 2020. And this year we were introduced to the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, but I still don't own a PlayStation 5 and I'm not sure if I will be getting one yet. But we will, we'll, but I will, will keep you guys updated on that as time goes on. This year we had some, some good games, but we also had some bad games as well and, st and stuff like that and more. But like, what will, will, will year 2021 hold for us? We'll have to find out. But let's do a little recap of, 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 of gaming of the year 2020. And we had some good games here this year. We had, we had some, some interesting JRPGs like Death and Request 2, which was a sequel to one of my favorite J JRPGs of, of last year. Well, actually, we take the back of, of the year 2019, where the setting is different. We have new characters and everything like that. Sure, that like the main protagonist, Sheena. Nino Mia is a supporting character in this one, stuff like that. We have an all new new character and it's a different setting and everything. And it's definitely a great great to see a sequel to Death End and Request. We also saw Atelier Riza, eh, Riza Ever Darkness in the Secret Hideout and stuff, which they're having a new Atelier Riza card game coming out, out this year for the PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5, so it is interesting to know that Riza is gonna be a playable character in a new Atelier game, definitely. And we also had Yakuza Remastered Collection, which was a game I was definitely waiting for because me getting into Yakuza on the PlayStation 4 and stuff like that, I was waiting for the day where they would remaster their like the the other Yakuza games because I really didn't want to didn't want want to buy the other Yakuza games for like the PlayStation 3 or something like that because like with the technology of the PS4, it's good just to play them all in there. And normally I'm not really a fan of remastered their collections stuff like that, but this was what this was was, was different because. It was it was the only way to be able to play a physical copy of Yakuza 5 and stuff too. So Yakuza Remastered was definitely there, and of course like with Judgment too. Judgment came I don't I don't remember what year the what year Judgment came out, but Judgment was also a really good game too. We were also introduced to Ghost of Tsushima, which was a, a high anticipated game by Sucker Punch, which dealt out with samurais and everything like that. And I love samurai games, mainly, mainly like Genji and um, Anamusho and stuff like that, and it was great to see uh, another samurai game as fine here. And this game, just made by Sucker Punch, has has, has like those gameplay elements of, of like Infamous and Sly Cooper and all that stuff and more and more. And I was a, a, a little a little bit bit iffy on buying this game because like I will admit I did hear about like how the lip sync does not match up with the Japanese and does with the English, but still like I I, I still wanted to give it a chance because like, I like samurai stuff and I like and, and, and like I, I like samurai movies like um the. Uh, a Kurosawa films and all that stuff and all the samurais that like like samurai and, and all that stuff and I, I love samurai stuff I love like Japan so I definitely had to get this there. Deliver Us the Moon was a game that caught me by surprise because th this is the first time time for the Rive scene where, where, where you play the game as an astronaut doing exploring the moon and doing doing missions like on the moon and stuff and that really caught my eye there because I knew nothing about this game and I saw it and I'm thinking to myself whoa this is this is really cool. The, a game where you play as an astronaut on the moon always makes you feel like you're Neil Armstrong or something like that. But even though you're not Neil Armstrong, it makes you, it makes you feel like you are in the game because doing all this stuff on the moon, being in space, like I know it's nothing like like No Man's Sky or Mass Effect or all that stuff, but still, they do it in their own way, definitely. And of course, like a game that me and my friend Casual Gamer were looking forward to was Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact, like I first thought it was gonna be online only, and I what I wasn't really looking forward to it. But then I heard it was free. It was free to play and play offline as well. I was there. I mean, like I love. I, I like how a big this game is. You get you get all this content for free. Sure, you have DLC that you have to pay for, but the main part of the game here is like that. We're going doing missions and fighting foes and all that stuff. We, you you play as you play as as a no name character. You can play as a male or female. I played as a female character. I named her Kagura based off the Seven Kagura franchise. Because the only name I can think of for a female male male explorer character and stuff like that. So. I, I just had some fun with that and and like being able to play Genshin Impact there there and my buddy Casual Gamer has not been able to try it out yet but I can tell you right now it's definitely worth it if you like those like um those anime Japanese like um settings where you're like in these big kingdoms doing missions stuff like that where you're like a traveler or explorer stuff like that gonna do missions 
The only thing I do wish though is that I wish your character talked more and stuff because like I wish your character, your character, your character talk more, but then they got the, they got the, they got the Japanese audio. They also have, have, have a Korean audio too, but I'm sticking with the main Japanese audio. That's how how it was there. And No Man's Sky is on this list there because they have made so many updates to No Man's Sky, which making it more playable every year and stuff like that. So No Man's Sky is getting bigger and more epic, and it was released on the Xbox Box Box One recently as well. And I heard they're re-releasing it for the PlayStation 5 and 5 and stuff, the Xbox Series X. So. I feel like that the game does not need to need to be released for a next gen console because it's fine the way it is with all the updates. But still, that's just me. But now, I'm, but now, like we also got like Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, and I did not know this game was gonna be on the PS4 either and stuff like that. I mean, I, there's a PS5 version, but I got on the PS4 and it runs fine. So whatever version you get, you're gonna be, you're gonna be fine there. I love this game. It continues the epic Spider-Man man storyline. But I will admit though, this game is short. And you can't play as multiple characters there's like how you like how you could in in the last game. But here, like it's still epic there. And it's got it's got some 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 cool ass bad guys and stuff and all and all, and all the all that, that other things. And th this time this this time it takes place in Harlem, New 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 York, and you're Miles Morales time, not not Peter Parker. And I know people complain that they changed Peter Parker's face around and stuff like that, which wasn't really an issue for me because like it's still Spider-Man, it's still Peter Parker. I mean, they changed his face around in the PS5 remaster to make him look 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 more like 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 him. You're alone, throw the actor and stuff like that. But I don't really care the way. That's just a small nitpick people are complaining about. But it feels like 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 the first Marvel Spider-Man game. It is really short. You'll beat it in about like like I don't know five hours or like that. But you got a lot a lot of side missions you you can do like how you could in the last game. And there's a new game plus like right from the start, not having to wait a while for a new game plus to come out. And of course you got the abundant distance of suits to choose from, buttons of power ups and stuff, and a dark story. And and instead of if it being bright and sunny and stuff like that, this time it's snowing out and stuff. And then we, we we got Sackboy Big Adventure, like the first 3D 3D adventure game for like for like Little Big Planet there, because like all the other Little Big Planet games were like were like side scrollers, like 2.5D 3D side scrollers. Here we got we got a big 3D 3D adventure for Sackboy himself, and the first time where Sackboy has a big epic 3D game like this. So kudos to that that they had made it like this. But that's pretty much it for the for the good. Now we gotta talk about the bads here. The first bad game I want to talk about here was a game that I actually liked at first, but then after beating it and, and seeing all the reviews and, and reading the crappy game wiki article on it, I didn't like it anymore. And that game is The Last of Us Part 2. I mean, how, how could, could, could you do this this to Last of Us? You had a fantastic a fantastic game with like with like great characters and epic storylines and stuff like that, and here they just throw all that, that, that out the door. Like, Joel is like... Like, like, well, Joel, Joel Miller from the from, from from the first Last of Us didn't didn't barely trust trust did, did did anyone and worried about Ellie's safety and every, everything and, and and dare not 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 trust and trust anyone he didn't trust or whatever. Here, he's he's very he he's too he trusts the WLF the, the the people who are in this and WLF he trusts them like instantly and they're too and, he, and, he, and he's too and he feels like like they're trustworthy immediately. And of course, like the whole thing, how he's killed off in he's killed off early on in the game by by the character uh, um, Abby and stuff there too. And you know, like I'm gonna be some, some spoilers here, so so sorry people if I spoil this for you, I'm sorry. But the thing is, like he's killed off within like within like like, like, like a few hours of the game, and he just killed off so fast, like like just just rushing rushing it there. And all the characters from the first game who were in this game have different personalities. Ellie is like it's it's now a stuck up bitch who she's like mean. She yells at everybody. She's untrusting. She's even mad at Joel for not telling her about about the cure about 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 about, about lying to her and stuff. And she's just not she's not an interesting character anymore. And Joel's just just too trustworthy. And 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 Tommy comes off as an asshole too and all that stuff. And Abby, and we have to talk about Abby here because here's the thing. When I first when you when the game first came out, they said you're gonna play as um he, um. Ellie the whole in the whole game, but instead you play as Abby for the second half of the game, and, and it shows her it shows why she killed Joel, and that just really affects the game the game from for you because like it says now you gotta play as the person who killed Joel, and Abby is not as interesting as Ellie herself, and just you didn't and, and her per and Abby's maybe these, these these camping goes on longer than it should. It just makes you want to makes you wanting to be able to go and just just go back and, and play as Ellie again and stuff too, and. 
it would have been nice if like if, if they did get, if they were to kill kill Joel off like at the end of the game and not in the first few hours or like that because that just ruins Last of Us for me. I mean like if Last of Us Part B comes out, I don't think I'm gonna be getting it because they did ruin Last of Us Last of Us with Last of Us Part 2. I mean, it's just they have, you have all these unlikable characters who have no personality in them and the characters that do personality in them are just they're just very brief and just are unlikable, like like, like the characters I mentioned, especially Abby, Ellie, and Ellie in this one and stuff. I mean, we we waited for a sequel, and this is and this is what we got in return and stuff. It's just, and I did like the game, I beat the game, but then after you beat the game and you, and you watch the cutscene again and all that stuff, you wonder yourself, what the heck was, was I so excited for? Like, why why was I, I I so excited for this in the first place? I don't know. But like with Uncharted stuff, that with Uncharted, Uncharted ended perfectly, like perfectly with Uncharted, Uncharted Thieves End. Now, I know I didn't play play that 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 spin-off on Charlie Games and stuff like that, which I I haven't played much of it. But when you played the the Nathan Drake saga of Uncharted, you felt rewarded. You felt like that that oh, I wa I beat the game and everything like that, and, and it ends perfectly. But here, you it's not satisfying at all. I mean, sure, it's got good graphics and everything like that, but that doesn't cut it. And decent voice acting it doesn't doesn't really cut. It. I mean, Laura Bailey, Troy Baker, and uh, them do do good job. But it does not have to save the game, though. And Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Enough with Call of Duty already. I am so tired of seeing Call of Duty over and over and over again. I mean, I lost. I mean, I, I stopped playing Call of Duty to call of Call of Duty World of War because everything after, after that has just been garbage. Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, and all that stuff. I just don't care about this stuff. I mean, it just it just amazes me that they're still going on and on and on with with more Call of Duty Black Ops and Call of Duty this and that to the point where like it's getting it's getting it's getting like annoying to see it every year. Like 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 it's non-stop, just lame overall. And Grand Theft Auto 5 on the PS5 really. We really need Grand Theft Auto 5 released on another next-gen console when it's already been released on the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Xbox, Box One, and PS4, and PC and all that. Do we really need this release again? No, I don't think so. And of course, Fast and the Furious Crossroads, a game that has so many bugs and glitches and I never really cared for Fast and Furious, so... Just not, just not worth there because like Fast and Furious is just like one one of those one one of one of those games where you like oh you 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 you, you like the series for a little bit but then when they make so many you just get tired because they milk them over and over and over again so don't bother it. And the Resident Evil 3 remake, I I was not I was not looking forward to Resident Evil 2 remake or Resident Evil 3 remake because the games are fine the way they are. I mean, I mean like Resident Evil 3 remake I I had some interest in because. Nemesis, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis is my favorite Resident Evil game of all time, but here, like, they changed everything around, and they get rid of some key things there, like the clock tower, like the St. Michael's clock tower and all that stuff, and they just make, make, make Jill into an unlikable asshole. She's mean all the time, she's, she's always in the, she's always mad, she's like, gruff angry, and just, Car the, the new Carlos is just there, doesn't really have anything special, but like, just a lot of the, a lot of the characters that were, that were likable in the original are just very unlikable, especially Lee Jill. So I didn't bother with Resident Evil 3 remake, and if people want to play it. Hey, check it out if you want to, but me, no way. And Half Life Alex, I haven't really cared about, about Half Life since Half Life 2. I never cared for Half Life 2. Half Life 1 was a lot better, so I can't really say anything about Half Life Alex. So yeah, and Con and Kondagua Jet Girls. It was a, it was a game that people made Summer Kagura. Ever since Sony censorship and all, all that censorship sh ship stuff, not even caring for it because like. Just as in the war, and Yakuza Like a Dragon, I, they, I mean, I, there's no way you can make a new Yakuza game with, without, without Kazuma Kiryu, because he's like the mascot, without him you can't make Yakuza. And that's pretty much all there was there for gaming, I mean, sure, it was a little bit better than, 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 than last time and stuff, but still, like, it just wasn't, like, more could have been done with this, this is the thing, like, the more could have been done with gaming, it was better, we have a long way to go to get back to how gaming was back in the, back in the days and stuff, when we were growing up and stuff, because all the DLC, microtransaction, all stuff, that's still there, it's not gonna go away, and, you know, it's just, will I be getting the PS PlayStation 5? I have no idea, maybe, maybe not, if I do, it's gonna be a while, but there's nothing really interesting on the, uh, the, uh, PlayStation 5, like, what am I gonna play, like, Godfall? And stuff like that, or or whatever. I mean, like, it make a quantum dream game, yeah, maybe. But just, I don't have an interest in getting a PS5 right now, and I probably won't be getting a PS5, or maybe I would. I don't know. No Xbox. I haven't been a fan of Microsoft ever since the the 360 red ring on me and stuff like that. So, haven't been a fan of Microsoft and Nintendo Switch. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I can't 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 tell you guys this stuff.
but I'm hoping that 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 like that like um, gaming in 2021 will be better. We'll see what happens there with the unravel of the new consoles. We'll just have to wait and see. Pretty much all I got to say for this episode. Um, if you like what you see here, you know what to do: subscribe, like the video, comment down below, and join my Discord group, TTBurg Gaming Tonight. There's always looking for more people to join. And just click on the link in the description below. Which all I got to say is Tony. Peace and out. Have a great day. And see you all in the next in the next video because there's one more video before the end of the year. Take care, everybody.